If you've done a Beams 3S GE swap in your A86, like me, or other old Toyota, and you're wondering how to get the tack to work properly, there's a couple of different ways. So the tried and true method that I have in my other car is I use some instructions from Panic Made to be able to add a resistor into the tachometer for the analog tack. However, in this car, I have the JDM digital cluster in it. And so I wanted something that I wasn't gonna have to open up the digital cluster to be able to try and modify it. And this is what I came up with. This is the Dakota Digital Signal Interface. What's great about this is it's easy to install and you can emulate the right type of tachometer signal that the stock tach needs to be able to work. All you do is you plug in a couple of wires and you're pretty much good to go. It's so great and simple because you've just got ignition power and ground. And then down here at the bottom, you've got your tachometer input and then high voltage output and normal output. For an A86, we're gonna be using the high voltage output. It's also got all these other options for speedometers. So if you had a speedometer that wasn't cable driven and it was a wire, like typical speed signal, you could use this to be able to convert uh, the, the signal from what you have to the tachometer that you have. So that way it makes it easier for engine swaps, different gearing, stuff like that, to have an accurate uh, speedometer, I mean. One of the other things this works really well for is if you've got like a, you know, a four cylinder vehicle that you put a V8 into or a V6 vehicle that you put a V8 into or something like that where you've changed the number of cylinders. This has the ability to be able to program to correct the number of cylinders because that changes the ignition counters, all that stuff, which is used to calculate the RPM. All of that is adjustable within this unit. I gotta give a shout out to Annex Suspension and Just Engineering for being supporters of the channel and content. Some of the best steering and suspension parts for A86. If you're looking at buying a set of coilovers, Annex is the way to go. Check the video description for an Annex discount code and links to both Annex website and Just Engineering website. I'm using a Link ECU and wiring harness from Panic Made, which makes wiring this up really, really simple. They've got this 16 pin connector for the universal harness that I'm using, and they provide you with the pin out so you can see what you have to wire to it. In this case, I need to tap into the ignition switch power and the tachometer signal. The ignition switch power, we're just gonna splice into that, and then the tachometer, we're gonna cut it and we're gonna run it through the Dakota Digital Signal, um, the D Dakota Digital Signal interface. This also works with a stock ECU if you're gonna do it that way, it totally works just fine. Um, same kind of concept, you just have to tap into these, and I will have to provide a ground. Luckily, there's a ground right inside the kick panel. Here's my ignition power that I'm gonna tap into, so we're just gonna cut that right here. And then the tack signal is gonna be a little bit different. That should be this guy right here. And I'm gonna have to splice some wire to this guy. Quick overview of the wiring here. This is our ignition switch splice. Then we've got right here coming out of the 16 pin connector. This wire is, is coming from the Dakota digital box. Uh, that's the high voltage output. This is the input from the stock ECU. And then I've got my ground tied in. I've got my ground tied in right up there. All the wires ran, ignition power, ground, input from the ECU on the top one, high voltage output to the cluster right there. Okay, now to set it up, we're gonna press and hold the set key, the button down here on the bottom, while we turn the key to on. It'll show the dashes and then we release. There we go, it should say speed. Tap the INC until TAC is shown. Okay, there's TAC. Once it shows TAC, we tap the set switch. It says gas. Now we tap the set, it shows in. Tap the INC switch until desired setup option is displayed. Input. Ooh, nope, we need to go to four cylinder. So we've got a four cylinder in, hit set. Out, needs to be a four cylinder out. That way we've got the proper tack setting. SIG, 
the signal is going to be high because it's a 12 volt. Okay, so we set that and then alt um, set. Okay, 18 doesn't work, so we're going to set that to 24 and give that a go. Okay, so here we got four cylinder. It's outputting 2000 RPM, so that's working how it should. I'm Link ECU software for the tachometer configuration. You can set the max RPM, the multiplier needs to be set to one. There's an offset, so you can even offset to correct some RPM, duty cycle, some other stuff. The key on sweep, that's what I really wanted. The key on sweep is one of the features that I think is like super neat. So when you hit the key, it'll, you know, it'll sweep the tachometer, which is super awesome. I love that. And this has the option to do that. So I can set key on sweep on, sweep RPM, and have it go all up to 8,000 RPM, and then a sweep time. So how long it takes to go up and back. Let's take a look. Let's uh, key on. Oh, what? The sweep works, hang on. Yeah. It, it misses the first little bit when you hit the, when you first do it, just the lag between the electronics, but it works. Oh, that's awesome. There we go. Now let's go through my thoughts on this TAC adapter. I'm happy that the install is super simple, it's just four basic wires. I'm also happy that I don't have to take apart the cluster to solder and a resistor into something that's kind of difficult to find like the JDM digital cluster, at least in really good condition. Because that's what you do for the other clusters is you take it apart, you solder in a lower resistance uh, resistor and it works. So I, I like the simplicity of this. I also like that you can program it, you can set it up for any cylinder number. So if you've got like a JZ swap in your A86, so you got a six cylinder or like a 1UZ or something like that, you can use this TAC adapter to adjust the number of cylinders to get the correct TAC signal that the cluster can, can see and use. And that doesn't have to be a digital cluster, it works with the analog clusters as well. The things that I'm, I'm not quite sure about here is like, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't respond like, instantaneously, right? There's just like a slight lag, uh, not necessarily in RPMs going up, but like the RPMs going down, like I showed. And I don't know if that's just a characteristic of this old 80s tech, or if it's this engine swap with the Link ECU with the digi uh, Dakota Digital adapter box to this 80s tech. I don't know if there's just too many things in there that they just don't all communicate super fast. It doesn't necessarily bother me on this build. It might bother me on something that I needed to have instantaneous response, so like more like race car spec kind of stuff. But with this kind of being a street car, like I'm happy with it. It's the aesthetic, right? This gets me the aesthetic that I want in a simple package that's easy to install. I just want to say at the time of this video, I don't know if all of my settings are correct on the Link ECU. The Dakota Digital I know is set up correctly, but the Link ECU itself, well, there might need to be some changes there to get it working uh, properly because maybe there's some settings that can improve that little bit of a lag or delay that I have the RPMs coming back down. I've been working with Panic Made with the ECU and all that stuff, so I might reach out to them to see if they can help me out, but really I'm probably gonna rely on, on my local tuning shop to see if they can take a look to make sure I've got it squared away. That's, that's it, I'm, I'm really happy with this. Uh, it may not be the most perfect solution, but it's a good solution for me, and I'm, I'm happy with the outcome. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Uh, Thanks, guys.